wedge and step. And doing that at the same time, it creates these opposing forces, right? So I'm going forward with weight and so I'm driving back with weight. Now on some stress testing here, if I get here and look how I can get my hand in. If we do the last break where I just hip out here and I come in here for the arm drag. Watch what happens when I drag though. Now look, when I drag, I wanna pull down and step back. You see my foot that's forward? This makes it harder for him to counter. But look, when I go here, now I'll step forward into base. See how you have your arm already in? Okay, so as you're making your arm go this way, make your hips go that way. There's that opposing forces again, right? Now, hook my tricep. See this foot that's forward? As you pull down, step back. Yes. Okay, then grab my back. And see, look, when he took my back, my elbow was already where it needed to be. So look, if I step forward, so keep your grip. Sometimes that gives me hand, uh, room to put my hand in. So then I can hip. See, so look, hand, hip, grip. So, oh. now here, step, drag. All right, and I can get like a little hip technique with just a lift and set him down from the side, from the back, either one. But what we're doing is when somebody takes your back off a drag, your arm is already in. And sometimes you think like, before maybe the technique, like, oh, it's a good idea, I got his arm in. But you're actually giving him a better defense with an arm. Okay, so step, step forward and swing, yes. Good. And look, see, so. Play with both. Play with wedging the elbow, stepping and driving back. And then sometimes that's just a really strong person, just gonna give you enough room to get your hand in. And then you can get a little extra out of that, okay? But a lot of times you can't go for the hand first, there's no space. Does that make sense? Okay, let's do it one, two. Okay, so let's look at, we'll look at some different options on this one technique, okay? So look, if he's got, this, this is very common. It's not that an arm in, it's not common, it's not that over the arms. It, all of that has its context. Okay, but this is the, the, the one that I work with the most. Like when I take the back from standing, it's the one, cause like the hoist, I lift you up by the hips, I can sacrifice and go backwards, Tony and Toshi. And this is so conducive to that, okay? So what I want to think about here is I've got three directions on this one technique I can use. And this, this only works, right? Like I'm trying to get, hit some of the technique to break, right, or to get my hand in, and I'm able to step behind. But this arm's still gonna be in front, okay? Now, once I do this, right, my hips are back and my weight's down, okay? So if I raise my hips, boom, he's going. That's just the hip technique version with no, I didn't even do anything with my upper body. You elbow back, we'll grab his pan a little bit and throw him all the way over here, right? So here, right, I wanna be finding my base, I'm looking for that, and if I can't get the wedge to break out, I look for the step on it, okay? Now look, when I connect my hip and raise it forward, that's the basic. And look, you can just do it here, like this. I went, right? I put both your feet up off the floor. What else do we need, right? I can throw you down every time, or I can just acknowledge, hey, that's good, boom, yes. Hit it a couple of times. The more times you throw, you can both stand back up. You can pick up with the hip you can throw. Then the rest of it is like a preference on what's shown, whether it's my elbow action or a hand here, which is still gonna be elbow or both hands here. Okay, so in judo, this is um, sort of a sukuanagi, or if I do the second variation, a tani atoshi, because the second variation I fall backwards here. Okay, and then look, once I fall backwards, I'm here. Now, pinch his down to his elbow to lessen this. Okay, so look how he's strong here. If I come down, I can start getting 
the wild. Okay, so that is, um, it's kind of like a hybrid throw. Like when I look at it, I even looked at some notes from a seminar where we did this with my uh, friend Zach. And I wrote it down as Nidon Kosoto Gari variation, the one where you go backwards. Because that's, Kosoto Gari is this. Well, Nidon is that, last day standing. Well, Tani Atoshi is what I sacrificed for in there. Or I'm saying from here, the rear sacrifice is there. Okay, so for, for here, I step behind if I want the, I want the going back, I'm, I, look how his balance breaks, and then I'm there. Here. Okay, now, look, I'm over his elbow, push down, and then I'm grabbing, not where my edge of my palm's at his wrist, but after that. Right, like more like the center of my palm to the center of the joint. Okay, and I don't push down, I push away. Right? And that's how he's getting, uh, feeling that leverage. Like when he's uh, taking it up, right? It's, it's just extending it away. I think if you push it down, you're not gonna be able to get your grips like you push. So think, of, think about some of that context. Play with those, and we'll do one more variation off this same throw here in a second. Okay? One, two. Steve Perry is the original front man of Journey, all right? Chris Burns, every time we do uh, the hip switching on the sacrifice, calls us uh, Steve Perry, which is kind of funny if, if you get the reference. If you don't, or you like that Filipino singer more, well, that's your fault, all right? So, look, I'm here, and, and when I move back, like if I can get over here, I can be going for either rolling or reverse ankle fitness, right? You don't want to get picked up and slammed. So, and I'm always looking to see if that's an option. See? Now, there's an old school one in um, like Mifune, but uh, McMillan knows what I'm talking about, where he just goes sideways. Right? We're going to do a sideways version, but we're going to rotate back. Okay? So when I'm here, look how I'm hooking his elbow. Okay, now look, I'm gonna rotate in like this, and my elbow's gonna go back a bit. Here. I'm right into the side control for the Pumor. Now, look, here. I want that 90, and then I'm gonna take it past, okay? Now I can start raising him up and get him to tap here, or I step over the head. Okay, so look, step behind, hook the elbow. I'm gonna rotate back through this way. See how, like, look what happens to his feet, how that's breaking his balance, okay? So I don't have to stand up on this one. I don't have to fall back. I don't have to go this way. Right? If, if those techniques aren't working, it's about all you got left, all right? So look, rotate, spin all the way through here, okay? Take this up. Sit through a bit, step over the head. It's like you're swinging a ball back here. Does that make sense? Steve Perry on three. One, two.